Welcome back to part three of this Mocha Pro and Blackmagic Fusion compositing workflow series. I'm Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. And here's where we ended the last time. We have our basic sky replacement in place, and now's the time to get things sitting better into place. Mocha Pro data can be used to drive other effects in different ways. And we're going to add a tracked lens flare in using Fusion's modifiers and Mocha's tracking. Before we get to the next section, which is showing how to use Mocha Pro data with parameter tracking, I'm just going to get this comp looking a little bit better. And I'm also going to do a quick color correction just so that the, uh, the background and the foreground are matching together a bit more. Shift and space. I'll just use a regular color corrector, add that in. Let's just arrange this so that the color corrector is only affecting the input into the tracker. It's not affecting the Luma key because that would affect our key every time we make any changes here. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, because we're at sunset, I kind of want the, uh, the contrast to go down a little bit. This is going to lift the blacks to make everything a bit brighter. So we'll compensate for that. So I'm going to take the gamma down. I do want the black level lifted a little bit, but maybe not quite as much as that. So sort of in this kind of area. And then I can use my wheels just to add in a little bit of warmth in there. Please don't think I'm not aware of what's happening in the trees over here. Believe me, I am. We will be getting to that later. Let's just play back where we are right now. So we have our sky composited in. We have a Luma key pulled on the background with our Mocha garbage mask. The next thing I'm going to do is try to add in a little bit of light. So I'm going to add in a lens flare uh, over here. This is going to do a couple of different things. It's hopefully going to help to tie the scene together a little bit. And if I'm lucky, it's going to hide some of the sins that we've got with the dodgy composite. Let's come in, shift space and type in lens flare. I have a few lens flares to choose from. I'm going to be using the Sapphire lens flare. It's, it's my personal favorite, so why not? And let's just hook that up there. This isn't the style of lens flare that I'm really after. So I want to choose a different style. But here's, here's just a little workflow tip. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to pipe in my original uh, sunset into the input of the, the lens flare before I come in to load preset. And the reason I'm doing that is because Fusion can get a little bit sensitive when we're starting to work with bigger comps and it's trying to feed in external frames into our effects plugins. So instead of poking the bear, we'll just take the easy way here. Now with Sapphire Lens Flare, we've got a lot of uh, flare presets to choose from. I'm just going to come into new here and have a little look around here. I actually think that the 30, uh, 30 mil uh, Takina is actually going to fit in quite nicely. It's got the same, the same sorts of tones. It's it's got some nice sort of obvious flares. Let's just load that in. And I'm going to hook that back up to the main comp. Play that around. I think that's going to fit in quite well. Now, Sapphire and Continuum effects have an advantage that other effects don't have. And that is they've got Mocha built directly into them. In this exercise, I'm not going to show you how to use Mocha built directly into the lens flare. If you want to see that, I've already done a tutorial in the Mocha Essentials course that covers that exact topic. What I want to do here is broaden this out and show you how we can use Mocha data with any parameter, even if it's on an effect that doesn't normally have Mocha in it. Obviously, having Mocha built directly into your plugin is a, a big advantage, but not an advantage we'll always have. So this is how we use Mocha data to drive all the other effects. Now. Remember, we've already tracked in our footage and we've already created some tracking data. This was the first thing we did. And we're going to recycle this data one more time because this Mocha data is extremely flexible. So just as we've used it to drive the corner pin for the sky replacement and to drive the mask shapes, we're going to use this one more time to drive other parameters. If we hadn't already exported our tracking data to drive the corner pin, this is where we do it. 
So we come in, export the tracking data as a Fusion Comp, and we do it just as we did before. Export track, Blackmagic Fusion Comp, copy to the clipboard, out of Mocha, and then paste that data back in. And obviously we don't need to do that because we've already got our corner pin data sat in the comp. So how do we use that tracking data to drive other effects? With Fusion, there are a number of different ways of connecting these parameters together with the tracking data. If I come up to the hotspot parameter, which is the one I want to change, just right click on that. I can connect that to my tracker node. And within that, I can connect it to any of the individual tracker points or even to the unsteady position of the, the tracker layer. So if I come up to the tracker one unsteady position, that's going to use that tracking data on the lens flare hotspot position. Is that what we really want? Well, no, not really, because that is connected to it. It's stuck there. So let's uh, remove tracker one and just reset that. Uh, so let's, instead of connecting it to it, let's modify it with, and I'm going to modify it with an offset position. And when I do that, I can come into my modifiers and I have a couple of things here. I have my position and my offset. What I can do in my modifier here is maybe connect this to my tracker unsteady position. So this is the average of all of the, the four tracker points. And then offset this, maybe using the X here to bring us into the right area, which is going to be around about maybe here. Let's keep, keep it kind of low. And so as we move through on this one, let's just play this back we can now see that that flare is tracking in and looking pretty good. And because it is so bright, I'll come back into the color corrector. Maybe just dip the lift and the gamma down just a touch more. And that's one of the ways that we can use Mocha tracking data and modifiers to drive different effect parameters. In the next section, we're going to be taking a look at how we can stabilize this image out a little bit, again, using that same tracking data that we created right at the beginning of this project. So join me in the next section. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I will see you again soon. Head on over to the training section of BorisFX.com and you'll find Mocha Essentials, which is a free training series to get you started on all the ins and outs of Mocha Pro. If you'd like to see more training for Mocha Pro and Fusion, then please let us know in the comments below. If you've got any suggestions for the type of project you'd like to see, then tell me down there as well. For a free trial of Mocha Pro and all of the Boris Effects lineup, head on over to borisfx.com.